Hey everyone, welcome back to Tuning RPG, a YouTube series put together by the creators of the Tuning Japanese podcast. For those of you who are just tuning in, this series is going to focus on creating some of our favorite anime characters in the Big Eyes Small Mouth, or Besom, tabletop role-playing system. If you're not sure what Besom is, go check out our first video from a few months back here on the channel, where we talk about what Big Eyes Small Mouth is as a role-playing system, some of the mechanics that goes into the playing and creation of the game and characters, uh, as well as just some basic background on the system in general. Also, don't forget to check out Tuning Japanese, a podcast where myself and my friends review some of our favorite, and in some cases not so favorite anime, episode by episode. You can find the show on your podcast app of choice, whether that be iTunes, whether that be Stitcher, Google Play, um, Spotify. Go check out and search for Tuning Japanese. Or you can go visit tuningjapanese.com to find each and every one of our episodes. Uh, if you want to support the show more directly, you can go to patreon.com slash tuningjapanese, where you can get all kinds of bonus content and help support our show. So today, we're going to dive into our very first character to create in the Big Eye Small Mouth role-playing system. And I know what some of you might be thinking, how do you choose your very first character for something like this? There's so many great anime shows to pull from, so many great iconic characters to create in this system. And for us, it wasn't too difficult. We wanted to start with something that showcased the abilities of the system without going too far out there in power level because once you get too far out there in power level it gets really difficult to create characters with so many different abilities so we kind of went with a lower powered character and one that was really special to us and the character that we went with was probably to no surprise to anyone who's been following our podcast since the very beginning uh, a character that represents where we started as well as a podcast and that would be the wacky and crazy main character of Excel Saga, Excel, Excel. Yes, we're going to be starting with Excel of all characters from the great show directed by Shinichi Watanabe, adapted from the original manga by Koshi Rikdo, and just telling the story of the wacky, insane protagonist and member of a cross, Excel. But before we can recreate Excel, I think we need to get use some background and you could go back and listen to all of our episodes from season one of our podcast but let's try to be a little more expedient here uh, i want to delve into the background of the secret agent and what makes excel who she is so you understand who she is if you've never seen the show before uh, and when it comes to research on the podcast we usually turn to the one person that can give us a wikipedia and my anime list infused deep dive into a character and anime. And we're talking about Josh. Hey, Josh, take it away, buddy. Hey, so I'm Josh. I'm from Tuning Japanese. And the only reason I'm actually here is because Andy locked me into the recording booth and says he needs me to record this bit or else I don't get to see my family. I've been here three days. I really needed a vacation from the family. Anyway, today I'm going to tell you a bit about one of the craziest anime characters ever imagined, Excel Excel. When we first meet Excel, it's her last day of high school. She's excitedly jumping around, singing about the brand new job for something called a cross. Well, it's more like a classu, classu, in a very cheery and super annoying way that's far more annoying than what I just did. At the time, we aren't sure what a cross even is, and before we can find out, the show unceremoniously kills her off by having her hit by an oncoming truck. And that's it. Show's over. Have a good one, folks. I can go home. <laughs> uh, there's, there's more writing here. Actually, this is our first glimpse into the world and the ways in which Excel straight up breaks the laws of physics, the natural cycle of life and death, and, of course, the fourth wall. Here, we learn that Excel actually is incapable of dying as she is protected by something or someone. Dear God, your writing's cheesy. Called the Great Will of the Macrocosm. A giant space void with lady arms and a voice like a beautiful angel. 
That may sound confusing, but it's really one of the most straightforward aspects of the entire anime. Just go with it here. Anywho, Excel is brought back to life by the Great Will, and then we meet her boss. Lord Il Palazzo, an evil cult leader with a keen sense of fashion, especially when it comes to big capes and shoulder pads. This anime loves their shoulder pads. Look, she's got shoulder pads, she's got shoulder pads, he's got shoulder pads, they got shoulder pads. Oh, oh wait, that's Legion of Doom. So the story revolves around Il Palazzo putting his ill-suited faith in Excel to complete a number of seemingly menial tasks to help take over Japan. Well, more specifically, the city of F. I think they should have just kept it to like maybe three square blocks? Baby steps? When it comes to the character of Excel, you need to remember one thing. She's completely batshit! She's constantly running off at the mouth, shouting out her allegiance to a supposed secret organization, and mostly she's making a scene wherever she goes. Excel is high energy to the extreme, and that personality leads to a number of special abilities. Abilities that Andy will get into in more detail while creating the character for the RPG. She sometimes has superhuman strength or speed, very reminiscent of the cartoon physics of classic western cartoons like the Looney Tunes or Tom and Jerry, but not Mickey Mouse. No one fucks with Mickey Mouse. Oh show, I just got us demonetized! These qualities make playing Excel extremely difficult, but don't take it from me. Take it from Jessica Calvello, the first voice actress to do the job of playing Excel in the American dub. We had the pleasure of talking with Jessica during our first season of Tuning Japanese. The first four minutes of Excel Saga, episode one, took me eight hours to record. Wow. Eight oh, hours shit. for four minutes. Now, if you remember what she's doing in the first four minutes, you mm-hmm. know, I could ask! <laughs> and that's the whole, you know, I mean, she's being introduced to us and we're learning how crazy she is. And she's the, the whole part where she's like, if you want me to strip down, I'll strip down! You know, that part, she opens up her skin and her guts and she's like vomiting tires and it's just... <laughs> but it was it was a lot. I mean, the first, the first four minutes are brutal and so that took me eight hours. Oh, and did I mention that she's always hungry? I mean, she has a dog named Menchi, which if you don't know Japanese means emergency meat supply. Yes, she has a dog to eat in case of emergency. And she's so cute, too. I mean, just look at those eyes. And that, you wouldn't eat that, would you? Sorry, we're not talking about the dog. We're talking about the insane human. Yeah, I mean... She's that weird. Well, that about does it for me. Thank God. My wife's going to kill me once I finally get home. Well, till next time. Bye-bye. Thanks, Josh. That was actually really well spoken. It's like someone wrote those lines for you. Hmm. Anywho, let's get to our actual discussion of the creation of Excel as a character. As a note... When I made these characters, I tried my best, especially with someone like Excel, to pull in different aspects of that character throughout the entirety of the series. And with Excel, it was actually pretty easy. It's a one-season show. She doesn't really gain new abilities like in shonen anime. And because of that, I was able to just kind of pull different elements from different episodes that really highlight her character and the things that she can do and a lot of ways things that she can't do all so well. So when we talk about character creation and we talk about any character for an RPG, when I create them for games, I always like to kind of look at it through the lens of how the character can interpret and pull in the stats and abilities and things to have the best time possible to embody that character. So if you're a GM running a game and you want to use Excel as an NPC, be ready to be loud and boisterous and obnoxious and use her to really get under your player skins a bit. If you are a player playing Excel, you got to bring that energy to the table. You are going to kind of steal the show in a lot of ways. But don't overdo it, right? You know, find ways for other players to stay involved and get involved. It's really easy, I think, with Excel to take over a particular session. So let's take a look at the character sheet. And when I pull it up here in just a second, we're gonna obviously focus on four areas, the stats and values, the abilities, the skills, and the defects. So here we have Excel. And if you take a look at this sheet here, you'll notice a few things that we talked about in our very first episode. The first thing you'll notice are the character points and the skill points. 
Character points of 40 is a pretty low level sort of game, kind of above average. And if we think about the world of Excel Saga, there are some crazy high powered things going on, especially in the episodes where we get things like Robin Matsu and the robots, or you know some of the really later episodes where all the shit just kind of hits the fan. But for the most part, 40 points, I think, is a pretty good build for Excel. And again, if you remember from our first video, those 40 points go into not only the stats, but the abilities in which we use. Skill points, kind of easy, too, to give her below average skill points. 20 is your average starting skill points. And I think 10 points here with the unskilled defect, which is one of the defects that you see on the screen at the very bottom right, makes a whole lot of sense here. She's really bad at her job, folks. She's not good at anything whatsoever. And that shows first and foremost in her stats. So if you take a look at the three stats that we talked about last time, body, mind, and soul, four is average. And with the mechanic, again, you're rolling 2d6, so you want to hit that number or below in order to succeed. So for Excel, I went ahead and gave her a body stat of four, average. There are moments that she can do amazing physical feats, which is going to be reflected in her attributes but for the most part, she's an average everyday high school student. And I don't think it's necessary to raise above or lower her body stat here. Anyone who's seen Excel Saga knows that a mindset of two is actually really fitting. She's not all that brilliant and she's easily swayed and she gets very confused about most things. So to go two points below average actually is very fitting for her. In playing Excel, you're not gonna make mind rolls very often, or if you do make mind rolls, you're gonna have comic effects to them in how bad you screw it up. Because right off the bat, you have to roll double ones just to succeed in a run-of-the-mill mind check without any modifications. And even then, double ones is considered a critical success. So it's either she fails terribly, or somehow manages to have a stroke of genius. And again, there are a lot of possibilities for role playing that out in a really fun way. And then her high stat here is her soul stat, which I figured for Excel, we have to give her at least some stat that's above average, and soul makes a lot of sense. When you think about soul, you think about not just necessarily magic and abilities, but for the most part, I think the above average soul stat here really ties into her tenacity, the fact that she will never give in, her devotion to Il Palazzo and a cross. All of that, I think, plays into a higher soul stat and really makes sense for her. Would it make sense to give her a ridiculously high soul stat like an eight, a nine, or a 10? Absolutely not. But I think there's quite a bit of endurance that really builds her up in that stat over the other two. Then you have the calculated abilities there of health, energy points, shock value, and combat value. Uh, if you want more details on that, you can go back to the first video and take a look at that. But those are all pretty average sorts of numbers here. All right, now it's time to take a look at the abilities over in the right-hand column. And we've given her a decent amount of abilities here, even for the 40 points total. And we're just gonna go through these alphabetically. That's how I like to kind of put them on these big eye, small mouth sheets. And we'll talk about each one and how they kind of fit in with the story and what each of them mean. The first ability is Art of Distraction, and it costs one point per level and can go all the way up to six levels total. At each level, the character is able to influence and distract more individuals. So at level one, you can distract up to one individual or 5% of a crowd will be motivated by your actions. Level two, you can distract up to two individuals or 10% of a crowd will be motivated. And then level three, you could distract a small crowd or 20% of an audience will be motivated. Now, Excel is out there. She's boisterous. She'll dance around and scream and make noise and cause trouble and Whenever she's in crowds in an anime, you notice that people will stop and take notice at her bizarre behavior. And I think that Art of Distraction is the perfect skill to really encapsulate that aspect of Excel. Combat Mastery is pretty straightforward. It's just a buff for the combat value that we talked about a little bit ago. Each point that you put into Combat Mastery, which costs two points per level, adds to that combat value of the character. And Excel may not be the most adept fighter in hand-to-hand -hand combat, but she can definitely hold her own. We've seen her punch some poochus. We've seen her deliver a crazy right hand to Pedro in the very first episode. There's a lot there that I think 
would add to her ability in a fight. Damn Healthy is another stat that is pretty straightforward. It just adds to a character's health. So we gave Excel another 10 hit points here, or health points in this system, to make sure that she could stand up and last in a fight. Which again, for her, considering the fact she dies so damn much in this anime, more on that in a minute, uh, I figure a little bit of health might not be a bad thing to absorb a bullet or two from Il Palazzo. Speaking of her penchant for dying, we now have Divine Relationships, which is one point per level and is uh, at level 5 here, so almost maxed. What this means is getting to re-roll the number of dice equal to your level for a particular session of a game. Excel might be annoying and grab people's attention in a bad way, but she's also extremely lucky. And that is played out here with the Divine Relationship. And the way that I see it is she's given chance after chance after chance throughout the anime from the great will of the macrocosm, that spinning void with arms that essentially resets the story time and time again throughout the series. So Divine Relationship seems to make a whole lot of sense for Excel in this particular situation. Life Support is another interesting skill here that makes a whole lot of sense. One point per level, giving her two levels here, which allows her to survive any environment which we see throughout the course of the story, where she, even in episode one, where she says, you know, through raining floods and, and, and all of these different sort of situations, she'll do whatever she can for a cross. Uh, there's the amazing episode where she's taken prisoner by some sort of crazy, I don't know if it's like South American or some sort of military group, and she's tortured. And I figure life support is something that would totally fit her character. Mind Shield is there specifically to show her kind of dumb nature. Because she's so oblivious to things, I feel like she is definitely very resistant to mental attacks. When, for example, she's uh, attacked by the Poochus and they try to use their cuteness against her, it never seems to work. And then she just karate chops them, revealing how terrible and ugly they are. Organizational Ties is another one that makes a whole lot of sense. Two points per level. We only gave her one level of that because of her connection to the group Across in the anime. Even though she loves Across, she doesn't get a whole lot of support and favors, as the skill talks about here. She's just a low-level member of the organization and, unfortunately, is not respected very well. But she is a member, so we're going to give her one point here. And the occasional positive thing that she might be able to get from that organization of a cross. The next skill here that makes a whole lot of sense is reincarnation. And if you watch episode one of Excel Saga, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. Her death can be reversed multiple times because of the great will of the macrocosm. And the best way to kind of show that, not just through divine relationship and rerolls, is the idea of reincarnation in general. Taking just a few minutes to kind of essentially bring her back to life. Now, if you really wanted to, you could go in here and actually give her more levels of this. I tried to even out the ability points, the character points, to 40, something nice and round. But I think it actually makes more sense maybe even to up her reincarnation skill. Because in the anime series, the Great Will just kind of resets time. She rewinds it, and things, essentially the reincarnation is as if... Excel never died at all to begin with, so I definitely think reincarnation is an important skill here and makes a whole lot of sense. Speed is another one that we see throughout the entire anime, the sort of Looney Tunes aspect of her legs spinning in circles and her flying off into a distance really, really fast, arms waving. Uh, she definitely shows lots of moments throughout the anime of just booking it, uh, unless she is specifically famished from lack of nourishment in which case that speed doesn't always seem to work out. So if you're playing her as a character again, you may consider how much do I want to use these more physical abilities for role-playing purposes in comparison to, you know, actually like playing the character and being true to how she would react. Stealth is another ability here that I think is interesting. I only gave her one level of stealth, uh, costs one per level. There are moments where she does infiltrate organizations, buildings, and is not caught. Um, but she's not great at stealth, so I thought it would be interesting to at least give her one level of stealth to make it a little bit easier and reflect some of the instances where she's sneaking around buildings trying to kind of find her way around and working for a cross, but at the same time keeping true to the fact that she's not great at it. She's just kind of okay. Then there's super strength, and again, I've only given her one level of this because she's not the Hulk by any means, but again, there are moments in which she shows uncanny strength, just like speed where she lifts something up and throws it, where she freaks out, where she can punch out someone, uh, which kind of ties in with that plus 10 to close combat damage. 
it kind of makes a lot of sense for her, even if she is not exactly a big, strong sort of character like we'd see in other animes. And then lastly, I decided on tunneling, which is kind of a weird one. There are lots of moments where she has to dig her way through and out of situations, quite literally. And this is especially clear in the episode where she's being kept prisoner by that military organization and she has to kind of like dig her way out and she bursts through the ground and is excited to escape only to be caught once again. The skill should be pretty easy here again. She's not good at most things. So I gave her one level of burglary, one level of cooking, one level of swimming, one level of unarmed attack, and one level of unarmed defense. Burglary, again, I think makes sense for working for a cross. There are moments where she sneaks into locations, and that'll make that a little bit easier for her. Cooking, we see her cooking quite a bit in the anime, at least trying to cook, uh, specifically her emergency food supply, Menchi, which is another character that I probably could have put on here somewhere in the attributes. Menchi is a dog that Excel owns, I guess you could say, is holding hostage maybe is a, a clear sort of way, and she always keeps Menchi around in case she can't afford food. So, so I think that giving her a level of cooking makes a whole lot of sense. And then swimming is more of a humor thing. Throughout the anime, she's dropped into a pit in the Across headquarters, and oftentimes there's water or some other hazard at the bottom there, so she's gotta learn to swim and survive. Plus we see here in a couple of their episodes just swimming in general. Unarmed attack and defense, just again, she is somewhat capable. She's not exactly a, an amazing fighter, but that'll make it easier for her to attack and to defend incoming attacks. And then finally, my favorite part of character creation, the defects. The things that prove that the character is not 100% the best fighter, the best thinker, the best everything. And it's really what gives flavor to role-playing, in my opinion. I love systems like Big Eye, Small Mouth, like World of Darkness, and others that have defects that force you to think about, okay, my character's good at this, but what are they particularly bad at. And Excel, as you can see here, has we filled up her defect section with all kinds of things that are super fitting for her character. The first one is awkward. And the way that defects work, by the way, is that they're either worth one point or two points. And these are bonus points that you can use to build your particular character on top of the 40, in this case, that we've provided for her. Awkward means you're clumsy, you're accident prone, you're going to hurt yourself in some way. And again, we see this played out throughout the entirety of the show. Not only is she a little socially awkward, but she's very much physically awkward, and that gets her into all of her comical sort of problems throughout the show. She's also easily distracted, which is why I gave her two levels of easily distracting instead of just one. There are multiple things that trigger her distraction, whether that's her hunger, whether that's her love for Il Palazzo, whether that's her undying sort of um, push to finish whatever mission she's on for a cross, she's very easily distracted and does not necessarily always follow through and pay attention to what's going on around her. Hyperactivity should be pretty self-explanatory. It gives her minus one to all social roles, which again should make it much more difficult for her to do things like take that leadership role and talk to people. Nemesis, level two. There are people actively out there trying to harm and interfere with Excel. We see this with Kabupu and his organization of people with Team Ditensen, I believe is what they're called. But essentially, she's got that problem. She's got the Poochus that she's dealing with who are trying to take over the planet who are actively against her. Hell, even Il Palazzo and the people of Across in a lot of ways are against her. And not even to mention that man, right? At the end of the, of the series, what we find out is kind of the big villain here. There are all kinds of people out to get Excel, thus the nemesis too, and a lot of things if you're running a game to kind of play against her. Unlucky also makes sense. While she is lucky uh, with the divine relationship and getting to re-roll things, she herself is not a lucky person. It's not necessarily like, like she'll have moments of brilliance where things will happen that will go her way. But as much as it seems to contradict, I think there are moments that she should also be very unlucky as well. And once per session, the person running the game gets a chance to essentially make her fail a roll. And I think that is really integral for the person running the game to find the best moment for that to trigger. And then lastly, unskilled. We talked about how she's not good at many things, so why not give her a bonus point back, lower her skill points to 10 rather than 20, and kind of go from there. That's it. You now have seen the creation of Excel in the Big Eye Small Mouth system. 
If you want that character sheet yourself to download, uh, to edit, to go in and make for your own tabletop game, head over to patreon.com slash tuningjapanese and become a patron. Uh, as a patron, you can download these documents. We're going to be uploading each one of these documents as we go along, and you can have this for your own and use. Totally yours. Free to do so. I uh, want to thank you for watching yet again, and definitely check out Tuning Japanese. is the podcast where myself and two of my friends review different anime. Currently, we're just now wrapping up with the anime Wolf's Reign for our fourth season, and we're about to start our fifth season. And... I think it's going to be a good one. It's going to be an interesting one. It's going to be a, a different sort of take compared to the things that we've done in the past. So check that out, and thank you once again for watching, and have a wonderful day.